Hey y'all, I'm here, and today I'm going to go over the basics of one of the best parts of Linux, which is also one of the scariest parts for new users, the command line. To start out, I'm going to go over two commands that sort of help you learn how to learn. Those being apropos and man. So apropos is what you use when you know there's probably a command for something but have no idea what that command would be called. So let's say you wanted to copy a file but had no idea what the command was. So you just do apropos copy, a ton of stuff comes up, but you scroll throughout somewhere. Generally ones with a one next to them are going to be like standard commands. 3, I'm pretty sure, is like C functions. Like, all these numbers in parentheses mean something, but what we're looking for here, cp, copy files and directories. In this case, that's the relevant one. Now, as you can see, apropos kind of spits out a lot, so a lot of times it's easier to just Google for what the command you want is. But it's still worth knowing in case you're on a machine without internet access. Then the next and probably more useful one is man. So now that you know that cp is copy, man cp will tell you stuff like what flags you can pass it and what they do. And if someone online had just told you to run this as part of some massive one-liner and didn't tell you what any of it did, this at the top helps you find out basically what the command is. So those are probably the most useful ones, but I'm going to go for a few basic commands just so that you don't have to learn the entirety of the Linux command line through just those two. So one that you'll find in a lot of one-liners that people on forums will tell you to run which is extremely useful, but also extremely dangerous if used improperly, is sudo. Actually, I'm just going to clear the screen, just get rid of distractions. So yeah, sudo says whatever comes after this, run it as root. So like, if I do who am I, you can see that's my username. Now if I do sudo who am I and then put in my password, then you can see that it's running as root. So this is useful for like editing system-wide configs like sudo nano slash etsy slash whatever or for package management. So sudo emerge whatever apt install if you're on Ubuntu or Debian or anything in that family, etc. So it is extremely useful, but also sudo lets you do basically anything. So if you're just blindly copy-pasting a command that's using that, be sure you actually understand what it's doing. So next up is navigation. I'm just gonna control L to clear the screen again. So first command for this is ls, which just shows you files and folders and whatever directory you're currently in. Side note, folder and directory both mean the same thing and can be used interchangeably. And some useful flags for this are dash lowercase a to show all the hidden files, aka dot files, so since I'm in my home directory, a lot of hidden files are just .config and other configuration for various things I either have or used to have installed. And dot and dot dot here are sort of special. Dot indicates the current directory. Dot dot indicates up one. So if I were to do ls dot, that would list what's in the current directory, and if I were to use this other command cd change directory to go to, let's say, downloads, and then ls dot dot, 
then that would show what's in my home folder, whereas just ls lists whatever I have in here, and then cd dot dot to get back home. And if you want to not look at dot and dot dot, ls dash capital A shows all files except for those. And by default, ls just shows file names. If you want some more information, ls-l will show things like permissions, owning user and group, size, modification date, and also, of course, still the file name. And if you actually care what size a file is, ls-lh will tell you that this file of listing stuff I had installed back in September is 21 kilobytes. Then the other useful command for figuring out where you are and moving around is pwd, print working directory. It just tells you where you're at. So if I were to cd downloads again, and then pwd again, it would say that I'm in my downloads folder. Also, cd without any arguments, just going back to that, just takes you to your home folder. And then next up is making files and directories. So, mkdir, let's just go with tester, then ls, and you can see tester exists, and I'm just gonna cd into that, and a couple useful flags for mkdir are dash p, so let's say I wanted to make a directory within a directory, so test1 slash test2, it'll say that it can't create that directory because it doesn't exist, so what's that? What that's referring to is the test1 doesn't exist. So, up arrow so I can edit that, add in dash p, then do an ls, you can see test1 exists, ls test1, and you can see test2 inside of it. And then if you want to make a file that just isn't any specific type, doesn't have anything in it, just touch file name, and you can see that there's now a file called file name. And then one other thing that you can use touch for, so ls-l, you can see that installed was last modified in September. If I wanted to update that for whatever reason, without changing anything else, just touch installed, then ls-l again, and you can see that now the modification date is today, and the time being just now. So now, just gonna go back into test here, and let's say that you wanted to edit file name, but didn't necessarily want to have to leave the terminal pulling up like gedit or kate or whatever. So the two main command line, not really command line, the two main terminal text editors are vim and nano. Vim is generally more feature rich and has a lot more cool things that you can do but it also has a lot more of a learning curve. For instance, it's a meme of people using Vim just because they can't figure out how to edit, how to exit it. So if you want to learn Vim, Vim Tutor is a good command for that. For now, I'm just gonna use nano on file name. Then here you can just kind of type whatever in. If you want to actually understand what this prompt at the bottom means. Caret indicates control, m hyphen indicates alt, so control g for help to get a lot of useful things you can do. 
then control X to close that. Now, if I typed something I didn't say I didn't want to, then looks like Alt U is undo, so I can get rid of that bad word that I just put there. And then if you want to exit, it'll prompt to see if you want to save, so just hit Y, keep the file name, and now if you just nano file name again, you can see that the changes are still there. Or if you want to read a file without necessarily being able to edit it, like for instance, if you wanted to pass it to another command or whatever, then you can cat file name and it'll print out whatever is in the file. And let's say you were looking at a longer file, like, let's see how long my X in it RC is. Yeah, so at this point, you could just cat it and then scroll through, or you could use the last or there's also a command called more that's basically less but not quite as good. And then the file name. And then you can go through this actual mess of an Xnet RC that I should probably clean up at some point. And you can use the arrow keys to go up and down, or if you're familiar with Vim, Vim style keys work for that too, and then just Q to quit. And also for looking through a file, if you want to just find a specific portion of it, like let's say I'm just interested in lines that mention X input, then you can use the grep command, which is a very powerful command. I'm just going into the most basic basics, but definitely a man page worth reading. So in this case, grep, I think I said I wanted to look at x input dot x init rc, and it'll only show lines that contain the text x input. Or for another example, with all of these commented out lines of different window managers I don't use anymore. If I just wanted to see which one it's currently set up to launch, then grep, and I'll put this in single quotes, caret for beginning of line, wm equals, and then dot x in it rc, and the only line starting with wm equals is this one, so I can see, okay, it's launching tech wm. And probably worth noting, especially with less and grep, is that you can also pipe the output of one command to be the input of another. So let's use ls slash usr slash bin as an example, because if you have split USR, which like almost no distros do anymore, then pretty much anything that's not required to boot gets thrown in there. On most distros, slash bin is just a sim link to this, and sometimes slash USR slash sbin links here as well. So you might just have literally every binary in your system in there. So. You can pipe that using the bar, which on a QWERTY keyboard is just shift and then the rightmost key above enter. Well, rightmost aside from the numpad if you have one. Then pipe that to less. And now you can take a slightly better look at what binaries are here. Or if you're just looking for something specific, then you can pipe it into grep and let's look for blender binaries. And I got blender 2.83 and blender 2.83 thumbnailer.py. So yeah, piping, these are pretty basic uses, but it is one of the more powerful things in the terminal. And if you'd rather peruse this with the text editor, I'm gonna just go back into test here and you can redirect this output using one or two angle braces. So let's use two and then pipe it into file name. 
and if you use two like that, it appends it. So if we were to less file name, you can see that the garbage I put at the top is still there, but now all of this is at the end. And if I wanted to not keep anything that was already in the file, then I would just pipe it to file name with the single angle brace. And now if we less file name again, it's just the results of that command. And just to give a bit more proof that it's overwriting, I'm just going to list this directory. And now just cat file name. And you can see it's been overwritten with just file name and test one, because that's all that's in here. And fun though looking around and such is at some point you're going to want to copy, move, rename, or delete files. So if you wanted to just make a copy of file name, like just to keep it safe for, from some future change, then just copy file name and let's go with file name dot backup. And then ls, you can see file name dot backup is there. And let's move the backup file just to make it especially safe. So mv for move, file name dot backup. And all these things where a bunch of text appears at once is just me hitting tab to complete it. And Let's move that into test one, and one flag that a lot of stuff supports that I think I meant to touch on with mkdir and then forgot to is dash v for verbose. So you can see renamed file name dot backup test one slash file name dot backup. So if we do an ls, file name dot backup is gone. ls test one, there it is, and. Now that we have this backup, I kind of don't want file name anymore. So rm for remove, and I'm going to pass it dash v just to see that it's deleting file name. And you can see removed file name. So ls, nothing there, but in test one, file name dot backup is still there. And we do a cat. You can see that it still has that ls output. And worth noting with rm and the next command I'm going to touch on, rmdir, is if you don't have the dash v flag, then it won't actually say what all it's removing. And I forget whether it has dash i for interact. Okay does have dash i which will prompt before removing, but that also is not the default. As you saw here, it just happily removed file name. So just for a demo of rm dash i test one file name, and it'll make sure that you want to remove it, which I don't. So then ls test one, since I said no, it's still there. But ordinarily, it'll just quietly remove whatever you tell it to. So be very careful with this command, especially because it's actually deleting, not just sending it to a recycle bin or something. So then the next one, rmdir. We can't use it on test one without passing additional flags because the directory is not empty, but if we use it on test two, I'm gonna pass dash v, it says it removed it, and if we do an ls, you can see that test two is gone. So yeah, that's just kind of an overview of a lot of more basic command line stuff. Again, anytime you're unsure of what a command does, use man. And if you really feel like just learning a bunch of new stuff, just again ls slash usr slash bin, pipe that to less, and just start reading man pages for random stuff that appears on that list. Yeah, so 
that's pretty much it for today. Have a nice rest of your day.